Hi, I'm going to show you how to create a simple vertex painting shader in UDK using this awesome simple model here to demonstrate it on. Um, the shader is a pretty simple shader which uh, you can use um, for different models. You can swap textures and change the blending properties. So we're going to start by just pulling up the content browser, creating a new material. Uh, let's call it master. Master material. Uh, I'm just gonna start by creating a texture sample parameter. Let's call it diffuse one. And then we create the second one, we'll call it normal one. And we're just gonna quickly gonna apply generic texture that I created here. Uh, apply it to the diffuse. Plug that in. There we go. Do the same thing for the normal map. There we go. Just save that. Uh, as you can see, it's uh, it's got tiling, mirroring. It's not very exciting. Um, it's a pretty boring texture. Um, so what we're going to do is that we're going to blend between this texture and the paint texture. Uh, we'll start by just creating another parameter, uh, texture parameter, which we will call diffuse2. Uh, we're just going to apply generic paint texture to that. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for the normal map, create a, core, create a copy, call it normal map normal2. Uh, apply the corresponding normal map. And then we're going to create a lerp node which we will use to blend between these two textures. So just plug in the two textures, uh, do the same thing for the normal map. Uh, what we're going to do now is that we're going to use a vertex color node to blend between these two textures. So, get a vertex color node. Use one of the channels, red channel, for example. Plug that in. Plug in the normal map. Uh, diffuse. Uh, actually, we're gonna swap. So, swap the textures. So we want the uh, wood to be the default texture, and the paint to be the texture you get when you're actually painting the mesh. Uh, so let's just save that. So we can take a look. So, go into vertex painting mode. Uh, uh, just deselect the green and the blue channel, since we're just using the red channel. Um, as you can see, it's a very soft blend. Uh, pull up the string a bit. So, yeah. yeah, basically what you have is that the blend uh, is a gradient between the vertices. Uh, it's very soft. Not a lot of detail or structure, not really what we are looking for. So, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna end, we're gonna add a blend texture. So, a blend texture can be basically any texture, uh, preferably a custom texture. A lot of people they like to use height maps for this. Um, height maps are good. Uh, you can also use the one of the channels from the diffuse textures, but the custom. Custom uh, blend mask is almost always better, even if it isn't as efficient. Uh, oops, uh, we're gonna create a new parameter, which we'll call blend mask. And we're gonna multiply that with a vertex color. Apply the right blend mask as well. So, just multiply that. Um, and then we're going to create another node, which is we're going to add the vertex color back in to the after the multiply. We do this since uh, if you have black pixels, for example, on the blend mask, uh, they will always be black, even if the uh, vertex color is white. Uh, so therefore, we add the vertex color back in, so you will always be able to get a value between zero and one, like black and white, because um, 
you always want to have uh, control, full control of the blending. Uh, so even if you have um, some black pixels in the blend mask, for example, in the cracks or whatever, uh, you just the you just add the vertex color back in. So you can always have control over the blend. So this creates a pretty okay blending. Um, gives a bit more detail. Um, still not good enough. So what we're going to do is that we are going to create a power node. And we're just going to plug this part here into the base. And then we're going to create a scalar parameter. Which we will plug into the exponent. And there we go. Let's just call this uh, mask sharpness. And give it a default value of uh, 10. So what this does is that it basically increases the contrast of the blender mask um, or the blending. So if you have a, a higher value, you'll get a much uh, sharper blend, much crisper. Uh, value of 1 will create a pretty soft blend. Value of 10, much, much sharper blend. For example, if like now we want peeled paint, so we want a pretty high value. And uh, then we need to create a constant clamp node. There we go. Uh, because we want to make sure that the uh, the value is always between 0 and 1, because otherwise the lerp node will freak out. So we'll just plug that into the alpha of the lerp. Same thing for the norm map. And then just save the material. As you can see now, the uh, blending is uh, a lot more interesting. Um, it's blending much nicer. Oh, hold on, let's strengthen it. Um, as you can see uh, here, it's uh, blending. Uh, the strength of it. It's blending first between the planks and then uh, the paint cracks up before it's entirely removed. Um, that is because um, I basically created a black and white version of the diffuse, uh, pulled up the contrast, and added uh, like an overlay of uh, peeled paint, which uh, gives this structure uh, in the blend mask. It's pretty pretty simple, but pretty effective. Um, so this is a pretty good way of getting a lot of more mileage out of your textures. If you have um, a lot of re reused textures in your scene, and uh, you need to uh, make it look more unique or hide tiling ar artifacts. Uh, this is a great way to do that. Um, or if you just want to have uh, different uh, uh, different versions of the same uh, same prop. So uh, what we're gonna do now is that we're gonna pull up the content browser. Uh, we're gonna create we're gonna create a new material instance of this material. Uh, let's call it metal. Uh, just open that up. As you can see, we have all the uh, parameters from the shader here: sharpness, uh, different textures, and so on. Uh, so we're gonna put that on the mesh, uh, and then we're gonna show you. Here, with a sharpness of 1, you can see the blending is a lot uh, softer. 5, a bit more crisp. 10, pretty crisp. 30, super crisp. Um, 20 is probably a good value. Um, so what we're going to do now is that we're going to swap the texture for a metal texture. Uh, there we go. Do the same thing with the normal map. And then just the blend mask as well. There we go. Uh, looks kind of funky since the um, blend mask was made for it was made to work with the rust. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and swap the texture to the rust texture as well. Uh, there we go. And do the same thing for the normal map. 
There we go. Rusty metal. Um, both the rust and the paint texture are like very generic tiling textures. Um, can't really tell because they are like since you don't cover the entire model in rust. So here we go. Paint. Rust. Uh, using the same vertex painting on the same mesh. Uh, just an example of what you can do with this. Uh, still not done. We're gonna add another, another part just for fun. So we're gonna create a new add node here, and move this back a bit. Create a new parameter, which we will call. Uh, let's call it. Blend add and just put the default value as zero. And we're going to add basically this parameter here and we're going to add it before the power node. And then we're going to save. Um, basically, what this is is that it's an offset for the vertex painting. So if you want to create a version of a prop like a version of the shader, which is uh, more rustier from the start than the other ones, and you don't want to hand paint the, so everything is rustier, you can just add this and just, actually, see, oh, actually, we need to invert, it should be a subtract, it works the same way, uh, we'll just, it's a negative value, as you can see now, if we, 0 0.1 value, we get a lot, like, a lot more rust, um, this is good if you quickly want to uh, increase the level of rust uh, for an entire area and uh, you don't want to hand paint all of it. So we can just 0 0.5, a bit less rust, 0, less rust, minus 1, covered in rust. So just a quick way to uh, offset the uh, original painting. And that's about it. I hope this uh, was useful. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty useful shader. Uh, I hope it was interesting.